Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. I was 10 years old when World War II started, and even though I remember it well, Lorraine Deal's delicious book, Over Here, New York City During World War II, brought back many more memories. And it also reminds me of the differences between that war and the wars we've had since. So I'm anxious to talk to Lorraine about it. And first, hello. <laughs> hello. Very nice to be here. And first, let's talk about the book before okay. we get into the let's whole question of war. Sure. I just enjoyed it so much. Thank I remember you. New York when I was younger during the war. The interesting thing about the war, though, is I don't remember, or my memories, is mm -hmm. I don't remember pre Pearl Harbor. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew in mm -hmm. Germany that there were problems. I don't think I ever knew that ships were being torpedoed or something was happening at the Atlantic right. Ocean. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot going yeah. on. And you have a recording, I think, of Bob Hope and Dolores Hope. I do. What happened is, this is 1939, uh, September 1939, and actually Bob Hope and his beautiful wife Dolores are on the Queen Mary, and it's, it's the Queen Mary's last commercial trip as a luxury liner. She was coming to New York, and she was going to be converted to a troop ship. Well, in the midst of this uh, wonderful trip, England declared war right. on Germany. I personally was on the Queen Mary crossing from Southampton to New York when this was uh, announced. And I went down into the salon on this Sunday morning, and everybody on that boat was in the salon praying and crying. And I was supposed to do a, a ship's concert. And I told the captain, I said, there's no way I can do a ship's concert with the people in this condition. He said, it might be the best time in the world to do it. And I went on and did that show that night. And I opened up with a very broad joke about the woman that was standing on the corner in London with her dress up over her hat. And the fellow said, lady, you're getting your legs all wet. She says, I don't care. My legs are 50 years old, but the hat's brand new. And they laughed at that. They, they seemed to want the broad humor. They wanted something to make them forget what had just happened. World War II had begun. And once that happened, all the U-boats, Hitler's U-boats, were, you know, they well, were given ga fair game. They were told, you know, you can go and hit whatever you want. So there they are in this U-boat-infested ocean, and, and, they're, on the Queen and Mary. they're on the Queen Mary, and everyone is terrified. They said, we're going to be a target. What's going to happen? So he gave a little talk, a little talk and I think we're going to hear a oh, little bit so of it great. now. It's yeah. very nice. It's so, very interesting. So as soon as... as, soon as they declared war. Mm -hmm. That's when they started. The U-boats were just allowed to go. And they came up as close as long. I mean, they exactly. came up to our shore. Uh, up until then, they were in the Atlantic because, of, you know, they were hitting England left and right. And they were very, very potent, very, very powerful. But Hitler deliberately kept them away from us because he didn't want us to get involved in the war. But once, uh, once the war was declared, uh, at least between Germany and England, he felt... Uh, okay, I can. Uh, there's, there's a little bit more leeway here. I can let these guys come and do what they have to do. They didn't actually come to us until after Port Pearl Harbor. Oh. That's when we had I those see. wolf packs, and they yeah. literally came almost right up to our shores. Isn't I mean, that amazing? <laughs> Coney Island beaches were closed off. I spoke to people who lived in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and they uh, were not allowed to go on the beaches because things would wash up on the beaches sometimes a body part because what they'd look out at the horizon and, and they, they would see, the... see these explosions and they knew that was a ship being blown to smithereens because these are the ships that were all feeding uh, england with cargo fuels. ships yeah, so, yeah yeah but they weren't american ships they were our sh yeah they, they were, were they were our ships that were actually going over to yeah. england oh this is filled, during the war right yeah, yeah this is before actually After this Pearl is Harbor. right right and so these were ships that were literally feeding England its supplies, its cargo, its fuel, mm. and uh, it was it was pretty devastating. Yeah. I mean, and then they got so brave, it, brazen, they literally would come to the shores in the middle of the day. I mean, it was a really <laughs> scary time. So, I do remember um, the the Bund, and I oh, remember yes. far, Father yes. Coglin and all oh, yes. the, the Nazi sympath fellow. sympathizers, and <laughs> yeah. and Yorkville, which had a terrible reputation yeah. in the East Eight. Eighty-six Street in the East Eighties, right. right? So you gov you do that in the book. I mean, they're wonderful pictures and stories about yeah. what happened well, there. Yeah, you know, I wanted I to do a necklace. It. I wanted to kind of put the whole thing together so that because I, I felt 
everyone knows a little bit about this, a little bit about that, like you were saying, yeah. but no one really gets the whole, the whole picture. picture. And so when I started to do the research and I saw what was going on in Yorkville, I thought, whoa, this we was a lot more it. potent than I yeah. thought it was, yeah. you know? So that was there. I know as I grew up, even after the war, mm -hmm. we didn't really go to Yorkville all that much. I know. It was, some, it was really funny. Yeah. And then the war came here. Yes. And that's what fascinated me, how quickly they adjusted to having a war. You know, I think, as you say in the book, everybody remembers when, where they were when President right. Kennedy was assassinated. Right. And I think all of us remember where we were when Pearl Harbor happened yes. that Sunday Absolutely. afternoon. Absolutely. And then I uh, always remember Roosevelt and the Day of Infamy. I loved oh, that. Oh, that speech. speech. That, that was, was the next, terrific. the following right. day, yeah. yeah. The city mobilized. Yes, it did. I think, you know, as William Styron said, this was the last just war. It was such an easy, it was, it, it was an easy war to mobilize yourself for because Hitler made himself a very easy target. I mean, it, you know, it, it didn't take too much. We did have isolationists, but they quickly fell into line once we were attacked. And once we were attacked by Japan, I mean, it's sort of like 9-11. Yeah. Once that happened, it resonated and everyone realized we really had to do this. Because up until then, you know, Roosevelt was a, had a hard time selling right, the war. Right, and I mean, we knew about what was happening to yeah, Jews, although I don't think we totally knew the whole to the, extent, not, no, not the not concentration camps. Not at all, not, not, not that places. early, yeah. exactly. But they knew that there was trouble, but don't forget, it was, a, it was a sticky situation here because as I was saying to you, we had anti-Semitism here, so even yeah. when they had a, um, they had an, a, an airlift to sort of kinder transport for uh, the, for the British children when they did that, that was sort of given such great publicity and here they are and look at what we're doing for them and isn't this wonderful. But when the German Jews were, come, were sending their children over, they had to do it word of mouth because they didn't trust the, the, the um, General the, the, public. The general I mean. public, yeah, yeah. They felt, you know, the quotas are narrow, are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So if we start making a big thing about this, we're going to really, in, yeah. yeah. So they, they had But we did. We grew up in an age, at least I did, of of very acute anti-Semitism. It was right along yeah. with other all the other antis. There were quotas in college admissions, right. even after the war. Yeah, right. And Definitely. I remember going on a car trip with my parents, and my mother would say, oh, we can't stay there. There are no Jews allowed. The word there. restricted was just part of your language. Right. I mean, you could get on the Fifth Avenue bus and see a sign about the new Jackson Heights garden community that had been built. And right on that sign on the bus, it said a restricted community. I mean, you'd see, you'd see ads in the yeah. paper saying, Christians only apply. It was, it was extraordinary. It's amazing. Yeah, isn't it? amazing. So with all of the burdens of coming yeah. over here and fleeing Hitler, there was this to contend with. And of course, also the German Jews who were coming over happened to be speaking German. Yeah. So, you know, people were looking <laughs> well, at them. Suspicious. And, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But anyway, the city did pull together. Laguardia the city was together. the mayor. Yes. Oh, and he was he was wonderful. He was so colorful and so vibrant, and. Uh, he was a bit of a, a, a chicken little. He thought, oh my God, the Japanese have bombed Pearl Harbor any day now, they're going to bomb us. And even though his chief naval officer, Andrew, said, no, they're not going to come here, he, he was very intent on mobilizing the city even before the war. He wanted the city ready. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people got behind him. Yeah. yeah he was a very so, strong character. I mean, uh, the mechanics, if you think about it, of getting all the air raid sirens mm -hmm, mounted. Mm -hmm. And then all the, the legislation and the process for rationing. Because I re, what I remember about it was the street lights were painted half black, Half I think. black, right. yes. So just the lower part was yes, that. Yes, so that that's the, where the light the, was. The headlights on cars were also half yes. black. There were much fewer cars because it was very hard to get gas, right? Exactly. There were fewer cars anyway, but then there were even fewer yeah. cars with the gas. I no remember question. we used to play ball on 89th Street, and if a car came to park, we'd say, please park down further. <laughs> and later on, it was hard to get tires and everything else, so people yeah. weren't driving around. Not at all. Yeah, you know, They had the great rubber drives, the scrap metal <laughs> drives, because it all went to the war effort. And then, of course, we had a draft, which is a major difference. Yes, that's, that's a huge difference. But even though we had a draft, there was yeah. this great sense of patriotism. Yeah, yeah. I so think people I, enlisted. They enlisted, in fact, I have a picture in the book of the, um, 
of a bus that the U.S. Navy had because they realized that the, the, the recruitment centers couldn't handle process all the people who were enlisting. So they had a big bus at Washington Square Park so that they could process them right through on this bus. There were so many people standing on line to get in too, Yeah, right? and the women, you know, the, the riveters, our, our riveting Rosies, a lot of the times those women wanted to get these jobs at the Brooklyn Navy Yard and at the, Air, at the at Grumman and Republic. I mean, they wanted to work and they needed to work, but they also wanted to serve. And that's what they all told me. They said, you know, our husbands are serving. They're doing their job. We needed to do our job. Everybody had a role. Everybody had a role. it was rolling role. bandages, knitting, yes. Yes. Uh, collecting scrap. We used to collect all the silver from the cigarette packages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And make balls. And then in school, because I was a kid, we got these round the discs that I now think of as pieces of ivory, but I'm sure they were I think they were Bakelite. Bakelite. That's what I think I they were. Because I have mine. one. I really I wanted do have them. one. Yeah. And it had our name. Yes. And what did it have, a number and address I or think something? it had your date of birth, and it had, uh, I think it has uh, date something. of birth, your name, and I think your address. Because yeah. they were there in case, right. and they told the children, they gave the children a, a different story from what I right. understand. but. In case there was yeah. an attack, I wasn't really scared. That's what I don't remember. I mm. I wasn't scared. I did want to be a Navy nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Dying to be a Navy nurse. I remember oh. reading books and and paying yeah. attention to it. It was great fun. Um, we had air raid uh, drills, drills all the time. Yeah. My father had a cousin who was an air raid warden, and he was very officious, and he hated him. <laughs> oh wow! But they would organize. They'd have yeah. meetings and they'd do things. And then when there was an air raid. Was everybody, were they all alerted before? I guess they must, I don't know if they were or not. Somebody decided to. No, I think they knew when they were going yeah. to have air raids. Right. And then the air raid wardens would go around and yeah. make sure that they did. And put that light out there and yeah. they'd blow the whistle. And exactly. Everybody had dark curtains and dark shades. Right. And then we had rationing. I yeah. found my I love family's <laughs> ration books. and. It, my mother had them in a thing that says the That's Myers. That's amazing. I've never seen yeah. this little packet. And then all of these ration books and the stamps that are um, all for yeah. different kinds of food. I remember standing online on the corner of 91st Street and Broadway. There yeah. was a subway station there then yeah. for chicken. And the line would go around, around the, block, the block. And, and, she and would the send sidewalks would be loaded online. with the ration coupons. Yeah, cause yeah. Was, it's just incredible. Oh, it's interesting. But what was interesting about this war, as you said, is yeah. that everybody wanted to do something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was clear that, you know, we were on the side of right, at least it, 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 it seemed to, to most people. Uh, there were a few dissenters, but for the most part, there was this great sense of patriotism. And, it, you know, it was, it was a simpler time, too. Yeah. I think things were processed differently. I think uh, the, way, the way news was given to us, it even there was a delay. So it was a, just right. a different very different mindset. I mean, everybody I interviewed felt very, very strongly about about the reason that they had to defend. They they felt that they were defending freedom, and the word freedom that was much more concrete than it is now. Now it's just hijacked yeah. by these <laughs> people who feel that if they give you anything, you're going to take your freedom away. And yeah. I mean, it's yeah. hard to compute. But this was a case where you saw, you had a keen sense of what was going on in Europe. And as I said, after Pearl Harbor, um, you were, we were being attacked, and right. we, had to, we had to defend ourselves. We had the newsreel films and the movies. Yeah, Pathé News. Right. And yes. then we, we always, we, people followed battles, but it was, as you said, the day after, two yeah, days after. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it was we still processed. didn't have connections to Europe. It was, wasn't mm -hmm. it sort of like Morse code or Yeah, stuff? I think yeah. so. It, and in and fact, even at one point, the zipper, the, the uh, lights on uh, the zipper had to be turned at off. At the Times because Building. Of the, uh, yeah. Because of the dim out. Right. The dim out took a while, but once we got the dim out, a lot got dimmed. Yeah. It was a very different. So now we have, we've had wars since then. We had the Korean War. Right. I think that had the draft still. Yeah, it did, as did Vietnam. Yeah, and then we had Vietnam, yeah. and now we have this. Yeah. But they weren't wars that had a clear reason of why we were there. Exactly. To exactly. try to explain about the whatever parallel it was in North in Korea, right? And what did that have to do with us, yeah. really? I right. mean, I don't know how many people got that. I don't think right. I did. And Vietnam, well, of course, that was the last, that last bastion. If if we don't get the communists now, they're going to be crawling up the East River and you know coming and getting us or whatever. This kind of unspoken, well, not so much unspoken, but this terrible fear. It was the domino theory, and it was a theory. 
Yeah. And it, the irony is you go to uh, Vietnam now and... As now it's a tourist spot. It's a tourist spot, and those kids don't even, the kids who are living there yeah. don't even remember, have right. no memory of it. So you're right. saying to yourself, yeah. whoa, why did we, we do that? 50,000 dead there. Yeah, for what? You know, during the Second World War, mm -hmm. everybody had a, a blue star if you had somebody in the army. Right. I remember the first gold star was this beautiful young man that lived next door to us. Yeah. Just beautiful blue eyes and everything, and all of a sudden one he day you hear he's killed. Yeah. I um, so in in the f in the Second World War they all volunteered. The only people who really objected, I think, other than some German sympathizers, were conscientious objectors who were in quite, who just didn't want like well, war. In the beginning, we did have isolationists, yeah. and and, and uh, Charles Lindbergh was a right. major isolationist because right. he did not like FDR. Didn't but like once Jews. the war was declared, then he, he was on our side. Yeah. I mean, even in, in Yorkville became the. Uh, when when we were talking about these scrap metal drives, mm -hmm. well, what LaGuardia did, which was very clever, he pitted one, he had made it a competition amongst the boroughs. Who could have the biggest mountain of scrap? So Brooklyn had Ebbets Field, this huge mountain, <laughs> and Manhattan had a few of them. They had one in the middle of Times Square. But then apparently one of the biggest ones within the borough of Manhattan was in Yorkville. So they oh, were trying very hard because to show their patriotism. Because the point about Yorkville, you know, Yorkville, yeah. and I, I didn't want to paint too dark a picture right. because most of the people who were taken by Hitler in the beginning and, 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 and were, were seduced by this were German aliens. They weren't so much German Americans. A number of German Americans did, but a number of German Americans were really embarrassed by all mm. of this. I mean, they considered themselves American first and German second, so they didn't find, they weren't, um, swept into this net. Mm. Although I say to myself, when you look at that um, <laughs> that, that uh, Madison Square Garden rally, they had 20,000 sympathi Nazi sympathizers showing up. And that I said, was where before the they? war, though. That was before yeah. the war, but I'm saying, yeah. where do they come from? That was a lot of people. Right. So it's a, it's a kind of strange thing. But um, we were talking about uh, the uh, patriotism. And, and, well, and it didn't, the, the objections weren't that visible until Vietnam. Right, oh definitely. And you know, I tell you, that's what I wanted to say to you. you we, we talked about, and I will we'll live through Vietnam and how contentious yeah. it was and whatever. When I went to Normandy, I felt that was one of, the, one of the few places I felt I really had to go. That was a pilgrimage and I felt, and when I looked at that vast acreage of graves, I said to myself, you know, there but for you, I mean, you're, it's because of you that I'm here walking this, this mm. city, my city. So, mm. you know, I felt a very strong connection and that, I think, I think most people feel mm. that. I don't think you can yeah, feel but that. But I don't understand else. how people, and I still don't understand it in this war. So now we have this war. Yeah. Which is almost an invisible war. Right. Basically because we don't have a draft, right? Yes, definitely. It's a war definitely. where you either, it, you you enlist bec for many reasons. Yes. One of you patriotic, and think this is important, or one that you don't know what you're going to do, and you want an education, exactly. and you need a job, or you belong to the state, the National Guards, to make right. more money. And people are there. Yeah, the but it's somebody else's. Right. It's a, and we, we, we. I mean, it's just incredible. I make a point every mm -hmm. day of looking to to read about the people who've been killed, and yeah. that's reported. Yeah. But also, we have a lot of people of color fighting in that war. Yes. And now come back to World War II and the way that black people were treated in that oh, war. Oh, well, they were segregated. I mean, that it was, was amazing. awful. And we talk, I talk in the book about the riots that went on in the middle of Times Square for about three days where uh, black soldiers would come in with the other soldiers on their leave, but they never felt comfortable in Times Square. They'd feel much better off going to Harlem because that's where they would be accepted. So, And even when that riot was eventually quelled... Um, How did you know, the riot start? There was a misinterpret... There was a miscommunication. Some woman was arrested. She was loitering in a hotel or something. She had a bad reputation, and this... Uh, other man, she was black, and if she was arrested by a white policeman, and and a um, someone misinterpreted it and said she was being accosted by this man and by the cop, and rumor turned to 
more rumor and more rumor, and before you knew it, everybody f had had their own version of the story, and the story was, it didn't it didn't even yeah. matter what the story yeah, was. Right. What it was is it was the little you know the little yeah. match in the dry uh, dry straw. But, and the, uh, the riot lasted for a couple of a days. A couple of days, yeah. But even when it was over, nothing was really right. handled. You know, LaGuardia, right. we weren't enlightened enough. No. It just wasn't it's a time. No, totally were not. Exactly. And you have some pictures here of Times Square, and I always, I, you sit and look at them, and you can't find, you can't find a, do, um, a, a dark face. I well, mean, they couldn't, that. you know, they, if they went to Radio City, they, you know, they, all of the, 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 uh, the rockets were all white. They had to be. They could not be black. So there was, and look at the sea. You're right. Every now and then you'd see yeah, one, but one, it was yeah, very, it's so very hard. Exactly. So the nation really has undergone lots of changes. Lots of changes, yes. And since then, it's absolutely uh, the irony of where we are now. I mean, to have a war where people, what the the other thing that I don't understand is the elected officials were reluctant to go to war, weren't they? I mean, there was a reluctance. A pullback against with Roosevelt wanting oh, yes, to go to exactly. war. Oh yes, exactly. Yes, there was a lot of. I mean, yeah, in fact, w one of the reasons we had the lend-lease policy yeah. was his way of getting around that and and, and aiding Britain. And he felt very. Str but you could understand where they would say, yeah. where people of good heart yeah. and good c good conscience would look and say, well, but that's going on over there. And don't forget, we did. We yeah. were in World War One at the tail end of it, but. You could see where people might say, but that's not our store, our war. Why are we fighting it? At least before you saw the horrors of what was going on in Germany, yeah. we didn't see that in the beginning. So they were reluctant. But yeah. Why do you think recently with Iraq, the president was able to convince the Congress ahead of the people that that's where we had to go? I, I mean, don't know. What has happened between then and now? I don't. I, that I can't answer that. I it's, think that we're. I, it's bec they become wars of if we don't if we don't do it something is going to happen and it's it's almost like it almost come becomes a very bloody chess game that they're playing you know if we don't move here which is like what yeah. Afghanistan is right. like if you don't move here and do this now then this is going to happen and it looks it yeah. all looks like it makes sense on a chessboard but when you're putting men in in the lo in line. Men and women. And women, yes, yeah, absolutely. That's another major change. That's a major, but major it is, change. It, it, to explain to people mm -hmm. now the general support for this war and the inclusion of everybody in the country is right. a very difficult thing. I know, but it, yeah. we were just a different people. And yeah. as I said, that, that war, I, I guess the best way to describe it is when you think about Pearl Harbor is to compare it on some level to 9-11. You know, and you see we're being hit, we're being invaded, we're being mm -hmm. destroyed. I mean, the same sort of assault An intrusion happened. on our property. Yes, yeah, exactly. Property. And so everybody becomes extra. I remember the, the, the day after that, everybody was walking around with flag pins yeah. and everybody was, I had one, and yeah. I'm not did, inclined. But did you speak to any people who lost children in this book or they would not be no, alive? Would no, they? no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't come across anyone who, I came across people who knew of people who lost them, but yeah. I hadn't come across anybody I, who lost I anyone. have always been amazed at how people are able to sleep when they know that a part of their family I know. is in war. Well, look at Mrs. Sullivan with the five Sullivan boys yeah, and yeah. they were all in the same outfit, I yeah. think, and it was because she lost all five of them, that there was, they, have, they then had the Sullivan Law, meaning you couldn't have, if you had brothers or, and sisters in the war, they Can't couldn't be in the, be same. In the same theater. And yeah. that still exists? I think it does. I don't sure. know if it, you yeah. need to worry about it at this point, right. but I think. But did we, we know. paid attention, it was the way everybody was galvanized, all the stars. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the stars organized to oppose the war. Yeah, well, exactly. In those days, <laughs> exactly. They had what? The, the bonds. Oh, the tremendous the, bond drives that were in financed the city. by the public, basically. Yes, I mean, exactly. the war, to a large degree, the war was financed by selling war bonds. And these are people who came out of the Depression, don't right. forget. I mean, it's not didn't like have they, a lot of money. No, didn't have a lot of money, but everybody gave to bonds. And what was interesting to me is how all of our big department stores 
got involved in all of this. Um, when I was looking for photographs, I came across Saks Fifth Avenue and I. Miller. Remember the I. Shoes, Miller? Right. Beautiful shoes, right? Well, they had war bond drives con in conjunction with the release of the movie Spellbound. Uh. And there were these gorgeous photographs of beautiful, yeah. transcendent looking uh, Ing Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck. And there they were, their pictures bigger than life in, in Saks Fifth Avenue and in I. Miller. And if you bought a bond or whatever, they would give you tickets to the show or whatever. <laughs> so, so there was all so that. And, now it, and in those days, the movies were so embarrassingly propaganda. A lot of them were, <laughs> definitely, definitely. You know, and the music was so, to get you all oh, stirred yeah. up. Oh, yeah. In fact, one of the things I wanted to mention to you is I've got an exhibit at the Brooklyn Public Library that's going oh, on right now. Yeah. Of It's, 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 an, a, it's a, a lot show. of the material from the book. Exactly. But what I'll be doing in April, as of April 13th, I'm doing a six-part I'm going to be curating a movie series of all the movies that are, most of them were in the book. Oh, good that have to do with New York City during the war. And where will they be shown? They'll be shown at the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Public, Public Library. library. But so the, well, the people should contact the Brooklyn Library to find out the latest yes, information? Yes, or go on, go on their website their and just website. look for it. Or, or do you know what that is? I don't know uh, what Brooklyn that is. We'll, BPL, we'll I think, dot com. Uh, I think it's dot org. They could, or, dot org, maybe, yeah. yeah. Or they can Google Brooklyn yeah, Library exactly. and look at new exactly. exhi exhibitions. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, Lorraine, we have come to the end of our oh, half no. hour. It <laughs> goes so quickly. <laughs> but um, it, was a, it was an experience that actually I hope we never have to live through again. I do too. And if only we could have a world without wars, right? Absolutely. And if only we could, we could have the same generosity of spirit collectively that we had then. I mean, I thought we were a wonderful people then. And we could use a little bit of their example today. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.